how can we fathom what life will be like 500 generations from now? Have we departed Earth, living light years away from our original birthplace? How are we birthed into this faraway world? Are we grown in a test tube and never actually experience the hug of a mother? And if we advance to this point, what does it mean about human hardwiring? Do we become less human connected? We are in a different phase of evolution, no longer driven by nature, but human intent. And some believe, if we don't speculate about this stuff, that we're going to have an existential crisis. Anticipating life 2,500 years from now requires curiosity, experimentation, and maybe the absurd. The absurd and deadly experiments in the 1950s of an American Air Force pilot jumping out of a hot air balloon in low Earth orbit undoubtedly paved the way for NASA's early space explorations. So we need science and imagination. If we are going to live this long and depart this far away from the origins of where we were born, we may need to evolve in very unusual ways. I'm a science fiction artist and body architect and operate on the fringes of magic, science and intuition. My artworks explore the frontiers of the human body and I use the tools of science fiction to ask questions about how we might evolve. These artworks are combining science with imagination and by doing that we provide a greater context to what life might be like 500 generations from now. Art doesn't give immediate answers, it provides conditions of possibility. These artworks are opportunities to understand and visualise what life could be like that far from now. Genetic engineering and the deliberate modification of life was the starting point for the biological bakery. This music video hints towards a time when synthetic biology enters the home and we assemble the body like we assemble food. It's operated by a mad professor running absurd machines, reconstructing the body along food production lines. The film urges us to embrace failure seeing it as a positive consequence in any innovation process. Here, failure manifests as a colourful glitch, discovering a new way to create the body. These extreme explorations into genetic manipulation led me to speculate about my own genetic makeup. If we are moving toward a design body, would we choose human traits that are desirable? Would my parents choose what they would give me? Or in the case of the next film, would I choose from them what I would like? This film, Make Your Maker, sees a woman in her lab cloning her body to the point of photosynthesis. Here, gender and ego are blended like a chef makes a cake, cloning her body in order to enhance it.
eating yourself in order to improve may seem a little far-fetched, but what's important is to hover the imagination and provide a platform to discuss how these scientific breakthroughs are slowly reconstructing us. If we are going to be born from scratch in a plastic dish, what does this say about our mind? Will human hardwiring, will the phenomenon of touch be genetically engineered? I began exploring augmenting the body from the outside in. Using myself as a subject, I experimented with different forms of isolation and touch and I became curious as to why I felt incredibly relaxed inside something so extreme and wanted to know whether others felt the same calmness. The Future Day Spa is a guided, personalised experience offering treatments that evoke states of love, trust and relaxation. This scientific spa replicates the feeling of being hugged. A client enters the spa, we, we measure basic biometric feedback, and you lay down underneath a pressurised sheet. A controlled vacuum is applied to your entire body as you're induced into a state of relaxation. We've now treated over 100 clients, some saying it felt like a relaxing nightmare, Others said it got rid of my hangover, it put my body back into place. One client said he suffered haptophobia, this fear of being touched, and said that it felt like an embrace and asked if he could take one home with him. I gave him an extra long treatment and when he got up out of the bed, he reached out and he hugged me. So this unexpected response that took him beyond his fear has led me to speculate whether these new forms of isolation are able to trigger hormones in the brain and create experiences that take people beyond themselves. Maybe in the far future, we will need to be stimulated in much more intense ways. Could we begin to condition our minds and bodies now for the things that we might face in the future? This is the Institute of Isolation. It's a research and testing ground, testing ways to train the mind and the body for space travel. Here we speculate whether isolation, or more broadly speaking, extreme experience, can be used as a gateway to train human resilience, our ability to bounce back. Bounce back. I was looking for other examples that tested human resilience and came across Red Bull's Pro Project Acheron. Here, four professional athletes are sent on 10 days of physical, mental and spiritual challenge, looking at the reactions of how they respond to things that go wrong. Their brains were scanned before and after the challenge, and in some cases, they saw structural changes to the levels of resilience and adaptability in their brain when faced with extreme challenge. So could we practice survival now and make these incremental changes to our body? Maybe think of it like we are all characters in a science fiction film, except the film is real life. The body is not designed to exist beyond the Earth's edge. Fundamental aspects of human biology will need to change. Don't think of this as a lonely place. Think of this as a place where you come to get stronger. If we can be resolved in environments of isolation, we have the ability to evolve human capacity and be more buoyant in the face of the unknown. Inventor Danny Hillis said, we are having a revolution in our definition of what it means to be human. If what we are born with makes us human, then what will we choose to preserve and how will we preserve it? Irrespective of how long we live or how far we, we depart from Earth's edge, 
Even someone phobic of the phenomenon of touch craves for it. Those primordial connections may never go away. Imagination can drive humanity towards dimensions beyond what we already know. We need to embrace impermanence and agree that biology, genetics, philosophy and the absurd are all fundamental when anticipating something that we all possess, the body. Thank you very much.